Google tracks your every move on the internet and in the real world, even if you don't use Google services. We are going to learn how to stop all of Google spying in its entirety. Yes, despite Google's best efforts to ignore user consent and just follow you everywhere. There's, there's what I call the creepy line and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line but not cross it. It is possible to stop Google tracking without disconnecting from the internet. We are going to go through Google privacy settings and we will learn how to use some simple tools to block all known Google trackers. Even if it is still possible for Google to collect some information about you no matter what we do, we are going to make sure they will not be able to make any sense of it or profit from it. You are very welcome to go as far as you are comfortable with. As the video progresses, you'll notice you have to dedicate more action to make things work the way you want. I'll show you how far you can get and you choose how far you feel like going. Every step counts, so don't worry if you can't make it all the way through on the first go. First, we are going to legally tell Google we don't want them to spy on us. If you have a Google account, and this goes for Gmail, Android or YouTube, go to myactivity.google.com. After you sign in, navigate to activity controls in the menu on the very left. Make sure you toggle off all activity settings. Scroll to the bottom of the page and go to search settings. Under private results, click on do not use private results. This should turn off search engine personalization to an extent. Go to adsettings.google.com and toggle off add personalization. On your Android device, make sure you go to privacy settings and turn off as many settings as you are able to, especially personalized ads and location tracking. Turning off some settings might mean you are not going to be able to use some features and you'll need to find alternatives for them. This is going to vary from device to device and person to person, so there is no one-size-fits-all guide here. When it comes to mobile devices, make sure your apps are not asking for any unnecessary or invasive permissions. Google can extract a lot of data from apps on your device. Always look for alternatives that are more respectful of your privacy. You can also install F-Droid, which is like Google Play but for free and open source software. That is a software that respects your user rights and privacy and its source code is freely available for anyone to verify whether they are intrusive or not. We can't expect Google to respect our choices, so we need to put up some defenses that will block Google's tracking attempts. Ditching Chrome in favor of Firefox is an obvious first step. On your phone, I also recommend Brave as an alternative to Chrome. On your Firefox, make sure you turn on tracking protection and use private mode as much as possible. Do not sign in to your browser under any circumstances. I would suggest to use private mode all the time and delete all browser data. Use bookmarks to remember websites you want to visit later. If you don't delete your browser history and cache, Google will be able to collect that information. So set Firefox to never remember history and automatically delete third-party cookies. In the next step, we're going to install some Firefox add-ins. Cookie Auto Delete, Decentralize and uBlock Origin. uBlock Origin is a fantastic tool that will block a lot of Google tracking scripts by default. I have a dedicated tutorial on uBlock Origin that will teach you how to use it in its full potential. It's quite long and a bit technical, so in this video I'm only going to focus on blocking Google tracking to make it as simple as possible for non-tech savvy people. All Google scripts can be used to track you one way or another, but some of them are purely made for tracking, others are used by developers to build a structure for their websites. uBlock Origin will automatically block only those scripts that were made just for tracking and advertising. But many websites embed Google scripts because they want to benefit from certain features. What we want to do is that we want to block all Google scripts everywhere on the web and allow them only when and where we want them to. uBlock Origin is perfect to achieve just that and it's quite simple. Click on the uBlock Origin icon and below the big blue power button you'll see four small icons. Click on the one on the very right that says open the dashboard. This will open uBlock Origin settings. Check the box next to I am an advanced user. And now go back to a website, in our case arstechnica.com and open uBlock Origin menu again. You'll see a bunch of stuff but you don't need to be technical to use this. 
When you scroll down, you'll see a lot of domains. That's how many websites you are exposed to when you are just trying to visit Ars Technica. Ublog Origin tells you there are 26 domains present and you are connected to 10 of them. That means Ublog Origin automatically blocked 16 domains. Which ones? Every one that's in the red. What's in the green is allowed. So that means Ublog Origin blocked some Google domains like googletagmanager.com, googletagservices.com and doubleclick.net. But you are still connected to Google through these domains. Google.com, gstatic.com, youtube.com and ytim.com. Fortunately, Ublog Origin allows us to block them manually. When you hover your mouse over the first rectangle next to google.com, you'll notice three colors are popping up. Red, gray and green. Click red and the whole rectangle now turns red. This means that the domain google.com is blocked. So let's block the remaining Google domains the same way. When we block domains using rectangles in the first column, we are telling uBlock Origin that we want to block them globally, that is, if they appear on a website across the web. We just need to tell uBlock Origin to remember our preferences, so click on the padlock icon to make our changes permanent. There are other Google scripts that were not making connections in this particular instance. The full list is in the Google's privacy policy and this is what we can do with them. Go to uBlock Origin settings and navigate to My Rules. And now, all you need to do is to copy each domain name, put it in between two asterisks, hit space and type in block next to each of them. I'm gonna put the already finished version of the full list in the description, so just copy paste it to the box under temporary rules. Hit save and click commit. And that's it. All Google scripts are going to be blocked across the whole web. Now the only thing for you to do is to learn how to unblock them in cases you visit Google services directly. That's what the rectangles in the second column are for. When you visit YouTube, you see that nothing works. The website is broken. To unbreak it, hover your mouse in the middle of the second rectangle next to youtube.com until you see grey. Click on grey so that the whole rectangle turns grey. When red stands for block, green stands for allow, grey stands for no operation or no op. In other words, grey tells uBlock Origin to do the opposite of what is in the first rectangle. So in this case, we undo the blocking rule for this domain on this website. In order to be able to watch YouTube videos without an account, you'll have to allow some more domains the same way. Remember to always click on the padlock icon to make uBlock Origin remember your changes permanently. In order to be able to log in, there are more rule sets to make, but for your convenience I'm going to include that in the description below. So just copy paste them in the My Rules section of the uBlock Origin settings and hit save and commit. If you want, you can always play around yourself to learn how to use uBlock Origin to its full potential. But don't forget to click the padlock whenever you want to save your changes. Otherwise, when you restart your browser, uBlock Origin will reset all temporary changes. This process goes whenever you want to watch YouTube embedded videos. You can allow YouTube scripts temporarily and for websites you visit frequently, just click on the padlock icon so that you don't have to go through the same process again. Ublock Origin is a very convenient and powerful tool, and while it might look a bit intimidating at first, it is going to be very natural to use and out of your way very soon. When you go this far, it's best to separate Google services that you use from the rest of your browsing activity. The most reliable way to do this is to close and restart Firefox after you're done with each session. In practice, you start browsing the web after you logged off Google and restarted the browser. If you need to browse the web while signed into or using Google services, you need a new browser to compartmentalize your activity. Whenever you are signed into your Google account or just use Google or YouTube, use Brave Browser for other web activities. For example, if you are watching YouTube right now, use Brave to search through DuckDuckGo or browse Reddit. You can harden some privacy settings on Brave as well. I also suggest that you start using Tor Browser. This is an excellent browser for being anonymous on the web. You can download Tor from torproject.org and start getting familiar with it. It is going to be slower than normal browsing, so maybe you won't be able to watch videos in HD on it. 
But it is good if you don't want to keep a permanent record of your light browsing, news reading and general surfing. Using Tor is like using any other browser, it's that simple. Just don't use Tor to sign into your online accounts because that defeats the purpose of anonymity. Don't change any settings and don't install any more add-ins or plugins. Keep Tor as it is. When you get comfortable with Tor, the only settings you should change are security settings to block more scripts. But I will have a tutorial on anonymity on the web in the near future. It's also good to ditch Google services in favor of more privacy-respecting alternatives. For Gmail, the best option out there is ProtonMail, followed by Tutanoda and Postio. To replace Google Search, start using DuckDuckGo, Quant, StartPage or Circs. Switch from Google Drive to Mega.nz or use CryptoMatter to encrypt your files before you upload them. Alternatively, you can also use OwnCloud. You can look into using Lineage OS as your alternative operating system on your phone. More Google alternatives can be found on privacytools.io or visit their subreddits rprivacy and rprivacytools.io. If this tutorial helped you, please comment below and share it with your friends and on your platforms of choice. Thank you for watching.